Hey guys, this is me Hassan and welcome to Hassan Academy. So today we are going to discuss few PYQs of GPEG. PYQ means previous year question. So this type of question, if you learn with proper explanation, it really going to help you a lot. But if you just go through that this is the answer C, B and like this, then I don't think this will help you much. Like in uh, book, if you see that Nazma and Namda, they have uh, given all the uh, answer with proper explanation it's really going to help you it helped me also and i'm sure that it it this type of book helping all the student also so let's discuss basically today we uh, we are dis we will discuss fee six uh, pyqs of gped previous year question and out of those six five from chemistry background and one from spectroscopy and spectroscopy also is part of chemistry only basically you can say analytical chemistry so let's discuss and uh, watch the video till last and share with your friend or anyone you know GPET aspirant then share with them. If more people watch this video then I will get motivated to make more videos. <laughs> let's start. So number one question number of HNMR peak in below compound. So this is the compound they have uh, given and they are asking the HNMR peak. How many HNMR peak basically one, uh, one two three and they have given some option here one three four two. So whenever uh, you get this type of question like they are asking either HNMR peak or C13 NMR peak basically you, you should con uh, concentrate to one thing that you should try to find out types of hydrogen or in case of C13 types of carbon the different types of hydrogen is present then though that many types of uh, peak you will get if suppose uh, three different types of hydrogen present in your compound then you you are going to get three different peak so so in this compound how you will confirm that how many peaks uh, we can get so basically if you s see this compound uh, uh, first of all you should know this uh, name of this compound even you don't know it doesn't matter if you know that how many peak that's all but uh, let me tell you this is di uh, dioxin sorry yeah. dioxin so this is dioxin and uh, if you uh, see one thing in this compound is totally symmetry symmetry in the sense this below portion uh, i have just drawn one line and below portion is symmetry with upper portion same time this compound is symmetry in this way also so let me explain properly so this if i mark this one is number one so here two hydrogen is there and same time you i have to mark this position also number one because this both position is same only from just from this position if you uh, if you go this way you you are going to get one oxygen and if you go that way you are going to get another carbon same same way if you go this way from this position you are going to get a oxygen and from this position upward it's going to get you a carbon same same way you can tell that these two also same so basically you are going to get here from only one peak so the number one a is correct so you have to uh, be uh, uh, sure about it that how many different types of hydrogen is present here here only one type of hydrogen is present many one made mistake here like they thought at least this one this one same and this one is this one is same so they are trying to find out two peak here but it's only one peak and don't mind i am taking little bit time because uh, just uh, for explanation i am taking time and let's discuss question 2 which of the following is an aromatic heterocyclic compound first of all you have to know that what is aromatic compound and then one more thing uh, terminology you should know that is heterocyclic compound heterocyclic compound is basically any cyclic compound where heteroatom is present like oxygen nitrogen and uh, sulfur this type of uh, element uh, this type of atom is attached out there so basically let's uh, try to find out that in this uh, which one is aromatic compound so uh, let me tell you some criteria to be aromatic any compound uh, to become aromatic they should fulfill few criteria number one it should be cyclic number two it should be planar for planar you should uh, know, how can you confirm that this compound is planar or not that's from hybridization either sp or sp2 hybridization these are planar and number three it should follow 4n plus 2 is equal to number of pi electron and at the end cyclization complete cyclization should be there anyway uh, we, if even we know this three it's sufficient 
so let's find out which one is pol uh, cyclic here all are cyclic here then sp and sp2 hybridize so these uh, if you uh, see this uh, b option then these all position are sp3 hybridize so basically these are not aromatic you can cut number b number c also same sp3 hybridize number d also same so we are getting this number one a is our answer if uh, in elimination method if you are able to eliminate three out of four then definitely whatever rest is left that is your answer but uh, let me uh, confirm it that this is also a aromatic compound no doubt a nitrogen is present here so it's a heterocyclic compound so let me confirm that this is aromatic compound so here four pi uh, electron is there and in nitrogen two electron also present here you, you may know that nitrogen has a lone pair one lone pair so nitrogen has one lone pair oxygen family has two lone pair and halogen family has three lone pair so this is nitrogen nitrogen family so it has one lone pair so number of electron uh, and these two uh, lone pair will uh, help in delocalization also so number of electron here total electron is six so four n plus two is equal to six so n is one here so this is uh, a aromatic compound so this is our uh, answer and this uh, compound name is imidazole you should know compound name also but this is our compound so let me uh, explain number three question in zeldon's method nitrogen present is estimated as nitrogen how nitrogen nitrogen is estimated in zeldon method basically zeldon method is used to estimation of nitrogen for zeldon method let me tell you nitrogen is convert to nh3 so correct answer is c and uh, one more thing i want to add like uh, i think in 2017 or 2018 when i gave uh, two times gped oh, oh, one time it came like uh, which reagent is used in zeldal method uh, there are uh, four reagent and out of that h2so4 is the correct answer so you should know that also h2so4 is used in zeldal methods so n is converted to n is 3 for estimation of nitrogen and same time there are one more uh, method also that is called Dumas method and that is also used for estimation of nitrogen only but in that method nitrogen is convert to N2 N is converted to N2 I am not writing here because it may make you confused so just remember Zeldal method N is converted to NH3 and uh, H2SO4 is used here and there are few compounds like uh, where this uh, Zeldal method is not applicable like uh, nitro group if no2 group is present it's not going to work zeldal method is not going to work out there if azo uh, group is there n double one n and uh, other than this pyridine if pyridine is there you you may know pyridine this type of structure and uh, there also uh, zeldal method is not applicable so anyway uh, this thing you should remember so many times uh, these are the question came out of this which compound out this out of this which compound is not applicable for zeldal method so you should find out the either nitro group as a bond or pyridine uh, so let's uh, go to this next question which of the following condition are used for conversion of ethanol to ethylene so let's convert ethanol to ethylene ch3 OH and we need to convert it ethylene that is C double one C double H. So this is ethene basically. So it is it is also called ethylene. So uh, if we convert this ethanol to e uh, ethylene, so here you can uh, if you observe then you can see that H two is removed. H two O water is removed basically. So this type of reaction is called dehydration reaction where water molecule is removed. And if water molecule is removed and they are talking about any reaction like H two SO four, always remember that it's going to be concentrated H two SO four, not dilute one. So you can cut this A and B easily. So now this is they have mentioned uh, also temperature. So concentration H two SO four seventy degree and concentration H two SO four one eighty degree. So some books this is all also given 170 degree so don't judge me if I am saying it's 180 degree is correct some book it's written also 170 degree so this is the correct answer even if next time they put here 170 that's also correct okay so water molecule how it is uh, released from here water molecule basically O minus 
oxygen is electronegative so it will pull this uh, bond then H plus from here only H plus and OH minus then this bond is going to shift here and you are going to get ethylene so let's discuss one more question phenol can be converted to O hydroxy benzyl dehyde so basically here which reaction they are talking about they are talking this is phenol and this is convert to O hydroxy benzyl dehyde so ortho hydroxy benzyl dehyde you can write uh, either OH here or this way or OH uh, LDHD group you can put here OH can be here if LDHD group is in this position then definitely ortho will be either this and that or you can write anyway it uh, doesn't matter so this is uh, our O hydroxy uh, benzyl dehyde and this is also called salicylal dehyde and phenol is converted to salicylal dehyde this is going to happen in Raymar Temen reaction and this reaction whole reaction I have already explained very nicely you can go to a uh, playlist of chemistry and you can get there how it is converted it's very very important Raymar Temen reaction uh, try to know it very nicely and other reaction uh, either Colbert's reaction Woods reaction or Saint Mary reaction I'm going to discuss this all three reactions separately in reaction chapter. So let's discuss last question for today. This is which of the following is an alicyclic compound. So you can see here oxygen is uh, added here and sulfur is added here. So these are heterocyclic compound. So you can easily ignore this option and option B is your correct answer. So this uh, these are the six uh, question we already discussed. Let's uh, explain once again. So here they are asking about HNORP, they have there only one type of hydrogen environment is there so number one peak is one and this is they are asking about aromatic heterocyclic compound for aromatic compound should be cyclic or planar for planar it must be either uh, sp or sp2 hybridized then it should follow Huckel's rule that is 4n plus 2 equal to pi electron other than this it should uh, follow the uh, complete cyclization also so this is our compound which is also heterocyclic and aromatic also this is called imidazole and here we are talking about Jaldal method which is used for estimation of nitrogen where nitrogen is converted to NH3 ammonia and if they are asking about uh, one another method that is Dumas method then there nitrogen is converted to N2 N is converted to N2 and a few compound where uh, Jaldal method is not applicable those compound where have nitro group, azobon and pyridine and let's discuss uh, this last one here we are ge uh, getting one reaction where ethanol is converted to ethylene and uh, basically this is a dehydration reaction where water molecule is removed and once in reaction water molecule is removed and they are talking about any reagent then if they are talking about H2SO4 that is uh, absolutely concentrated H2SO4 so A and B is cancelled and the temperature is either 170 or 180 so it's all correct and then at last phenol is converted to salicylate aldehyde or it is called ortho hydroxy benzyl dehyde so here oh, we are going to talk about the reaction that is Raymar Temen reaction I already explained it go through it once and at last following of which one is alicyclic other, other are heterocyclic compound and this is alicyclic compound so these are the few uh, explanation and I will make this type of uh, video more and more and you can share me your question because I'm in a different I'm not at home I'm in a different place I don't have any GPT related book now I'm preparing for UPSC so I'm uh, out of place so if you have any question you can share with me either it's any subject doesn't matter GPT related you can share with me uh, my email ID is given there uh, so you can send your question I will make about th those video thank you for watching and keep sharing this video and thanks for watching once again.